questionable guys, THT and LeBron, do you expect both of them to play? Yes. Right, uh, do you, uh, you've had some continuity now with that lineup with LeBron starting at center. Uh, what are the things that you would like to see, especially on the defensive side of the floor, uh, Frank, just with knowing the, the lack of size that's out there? Yeah, I, you know, the, the the size is the least of our issues with that group. You know, we have to work to contain the basketball better more than anything. And, um, you yeah, we can support each other better. You know, um, our help defense hasn't been uh, hasn't been good enough, um, not just at the rim, but, you know, just showing support on the basketball. Um, you know, the guy behind the left, the guy behind on the right, uh, just just shrinking our shell, you know, and not letting a man with the basketball see the opportunity uh, to attack his man as much as we're we're allowing. So, you know, that was the the biggest thing in the in the Houston game is, um, you know, we were just uh to spread out with our defense and you know, hopefully we'll be more connected tonight. Frank, what did Kuzma and KCP uh, mean when they were here for you? Uh, what have you seen from them this year? And just, I guess, other general thoughts on those two guys. Yeah, nothing but love for those guys. You know, they'll always be family, won a championship together and uh, just a really positive experience with both of those two individual players um, in my, in my time here, you know, the two years that we were together and was very sorry to see them go. Um, but that's that's the nature of this business. And, you know, if they're not playing the Lakers, we wish them nothing but success. Frank, to kind of follow up on that, um, I'd imagine you have a fun memory, too, specifically about Kuz, just kind of knowing his personality. And he said some stuff to us that, over the years that, that we've enjoyed. Is there is there any any moment or two that stands out to you about his time? <laughs> Only 100. <laughs> uh, Kuz is a fun guy to coach. You know, he, he really is a fun guy to be around every day and uh, to talk the game. He, let, he loves to think the game. He loves to learn and grow. Um, you know, I, it's tough to say, you know, one moment. You know, he had made some game winners in uh, in some practices, in late game situation practice. So uh, I think uh, probably the first thing that comes to mind is that game winner he hit against Denver, you know, where um, you know, he flew off to the corner and uh, just – didn't just do it in practice, but, you know, we used Bron and AD as, uh, as decoys and, and allowed Kuz to get that shot, and, and he knocked it down, just like he had done in practice. I like that one, too. Um, you know, you said before to us that you are sort of feel a little bit um, cheapened of the experience of the championship because there were some – obviously no parade and there were no, you know, didn't get to play in this building. Um, do you ever feel for those guys who, especially now that they've moved on, you know, something about them, obviously they've, they had great tenures here. They won the championship here. They had the rings, but something is maybe underappreciated about those guys. Well, that's two types of questions, you know, um, two different questions. One is, do I feel for those guys for not to have those experiences? Of course. You know, we all uh, missed out on that. Um, doesn't take anything away from what we accomplished, and we'll always have that. Uh, but it it wasn't the same as what everybody gets to to experience. Um, but we always keep come back to the perspective of, you know, people lost a lot more with the pandemic than than that. You know what I mean? So uh, don't spend too much time thinking about that. And um, you know, in terms of you asked if those guys were appreciated. Um, yeah, they're two of our, our best dirty work guys, you know, during that, that championship run and the two years that they were here. Um, really respected what they did on both sides of the of the ball. Um, you know, so, I mean, I don't think internally we ever um, took them for granted or anything like that. Um, you know, they, those guys were great for us. Right. What type of uh, challenge does Chris Stops provide um, on the other end? And considering the way you're taking the opponent game by game right now, uh, what type of challenge does it present for someone like Dwight to go from not playing to potentially seeing minutes? Well, that's always a challenge for any, any player, you know, to uh, to not be in, a, in the lineup on a consistent basis. Uh, but, you know, this is a league that is, you know, the, the mindset with every player has to be, you have to be ready when your number's called. And sometimes you're going to play a lot, sometimes you're not. You know, it's just part of being a, uh, a pro at this level uh, in terms of Porzingis uh, with these guys. Um, you know, I respect the hell out of uh, Wes Jr. Uh, Coach Wes over there and coming from the Denver system and, you know, knowing how they used Jokic, um, you know, at the top of the floor with a lot of cutters, the ability to shoot the three, 
uh, to play in the pocket and to space. You know, I think there's there's going to be a lot of similarities to their style of play that uh, you know that you see in Denver, and uh, I think that that was the the attraction to uh, bringing in KP. So, you know, they're going to be difficult to guard. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, we're gonna you know we're looking at them as sort of um, you know a team that's mimicking Denver system. Coach, of course, the goal of winning every game, 17 games left. Um, just curious, some of the top priorities for you over the rest of the regular season. What is it you'd like to see from the team that maybe is lacking now? Just curious on that front. Yeah, you know, uh, we want to win as many games as we can, uh, but we really ha have to have the mindset. It's not about wins and losses right now. It's about the habits that we're building. And we're going to have a chance, you know, and, we're, and we, we have a chance in front of us to be a team that finishes strong and you know goes into the playoffs as potentially one of the hottest teams in the league, or at least we've built the habits well enough, you know, that we can win one of these playing games or two of these playing games, whatever we need to, and, and give ourselves a chance to uh, get into a seven-game series. So, you know, everything we're doing right now is, um, you know, staying engaged, staying believing in, in uh, the opportunity that we still have and building the habits that are going to help us win those, those important games. Hey Frank, this season, who do you think have been the, the key guys that have emerged and fulfilling that, uh, you know, doing the dirty work and all that? In terms of losing KCP and Goose? Yeah. Well, it's uh, a lot of guys. You know, I think, you know, obviously right now uh, with, with what Malik is bringing offensively, you know, was where, where Kuz was and what uh, Austin is bringing defensively is probably the first two candidates. But, you know, we've had a, a lot of guys that have filled in. You know, Bays and Wayne have had their their stretches. Avery Bradley, uh, Talon's had a bigger role. And, you know, obviously Melo playing uh, sort of that that backup um, spread four that, that Kuz was playing um, has also picked up some of the slack. But, you know, it's interesting. We were, we were talking, you know, about some of the Kuz coverages and, you know, looking around the room at, at guys that were here last year with Kuz and just to kind of laugh about, you know, what do you think we should do with Kuz? And, and there wasn't many of them. <laughs> the Bron and Talon <laughs> were the only guys that we could kind of, kind of laugh about. So uh, just a, it's just a little interesting moment. But, um, you know, a lot of guys have stepped up. Yeah, Frank, two real quick ones. Um, anything new on Kendrick or AD? No. Um, and then did you get a chance to, to – whether it's a text or a phone call after the trades to, to talk to either KCP or Kuz, and, and if not, uh, if, could, you of course. Kind of, could you give us sort of what, what did you, what did you relay to them? Gratitude first, um, disappointment, you know that I wasn't going to be their coach anymore, and they weren't going to be in our system. Um, but you know, obviously, we all understand there's a there's a business, and you know, trades happen. Um, but really, just a, a lot of love and and respect, you know, for our time together, and um, you know, understanding that. And when you win a championship with someone, you know, that, that relationship holds forever, you know? So, uh, you know, those, those two guys are going to be family forever. And, uh, you know, I just wish nothing, nothing but the best for them, except tonight.